Well, I was playing basketball and um, way before, so I was diagnosed with bulimia, bulimia nervosa, when I was 12 years old, so I was in sixth grade. You know, it's not something that I didn't have any traumatic incident happen in my life, but I feel like um, as a girl in today's world, um, I felt so much pressure to be a certain way, and and I, I guess I never really wanted to be like that. I never wanted to be a model. I never wanted to be that. Um, and it turns out I wanted to be a BJJ fighter, which isn't, you know, and it's a male dominant sport. So obviously, I mean, that just shows that I, I was always a little bit different, you know. Most girls, I remember in fifth grade, you know, the girls would go out to lunch and they would, you know, sit in their little groups and talk. I would play soccer with the boys every single day. In fifth grade, there was not a single day that I didn't play soccer. Anyway, so I guess all of those things would accumulate it through my life. And um, so in sixth grade, I started um, having an eating disorder and problems with um, food and my self-esteem. My parents had no idea what that was. I, and no one even knew about it and two year, until two years later, I admitted that I had an eating disorder and I finally got help. But nothing helped me. Um, it kept getting worse and worse. At one point, maybe you know, in ninth grade, it got a little bit better. But it, you know, it was it was present throughout all of high, through all of middle school, through all of high school, and by the end, my senior year, it was terrible. I was it took over my life. I didn't have uh, any friends, or I didn't want to go out because whenever I would go out, then I would you know. I would be next to food, I would binge, and then I would want to go throw that all up, and then, I mean, I, that doesn't really work out with, with a social life. So, I'd rather, be, I'd rather have been throwing up and eating and throwing up than hanging out with people or um, doing anything else. And I, I, was, I was always, I mean, school, I always liked school, and I was pretty good at school, but even at that point, um, I started taking over um, my academic life, I didn't have, I didn't want to do anything. I didn't have energy to do anything. I fa felt guilty when I was full. So I would either be starving myself or binging and throwing up. So I would be in class and I, would, I wouldn't have eaten anything the whole entire day. And it's 11 a.m. and I have biology and I'm looking at the board and I'm thinking, oh, there's you know, one more hour to lunch. Um, perfect, I can go eat. And I would, you know, be like, okay, you know, Emma, relax, you know, you can go eat some fruit, go, you know, try to eat healthy, don't throw up. And then I would go down to the cafeteria and there would be pizza for lunch. And I would look at the pizza and, you know, I would, just, I would try, I would eat one piece, but, you know, that one piece, it would drive me crazy and I, I would keep eating. I would eat, I could eat about 15 pieces of pizza. Um, and then I would worry about, um, because pizza is like dough, so dough is hard to throw up. <laughs> Um, so then I would, you know, worry about um, drinking while I was eating the pizza, but then the, um, the liquid, I, you know, I was thinking, oh, this will make me even heavier. Um, so then everything piled one to another, and then, you know, I would eat the pizza, and then, I, you know, it's not enough. I mean, I was already full. I couldn't breathe, but, you know, that's not enough for, for someone with bulimia. So I would go eat five ice creams after that, and then... Um, lunch is over and I would ha have to go to the run to the bathroom and I would go um, throw up before my next class and then I would be late to class for 10 minutes so I couldn't concentrate um, I was constantly tired it was just took over and then I would go home and then on my way home I would go um, from school to home I would literally stop in every food store getting something and eating and then throwing up again and then I would go to training in the evening I would play basketball and I couldn't I mean I, I couldn't play <laughs> there was nothing in me that I could use for energy and to run so but that all changed when I um, when I started training BJJ martial arts, um, you know, you're constantly defending yourself. So just by defending, I think the defense part is more important and that's actually the part that helped me because when someone's attacking you and you have to defend something, you need to actually, you know, believe that that, that person in this case is, is worth defending. So yeah, I think it just sort of started getting into my head and I started thinking that way um, that I'm worth defending. and. When, um, when my self-worth goes up, then 
you're not going to tolerate so much negativity in your life and you're going to stop doing or um, accepting negative aspects of your life. And in this case, it was my eating disorder and that had a negative aspect in my life. And so I just removed it because I just didn't want it in my life. You know, and I, ever since I started training, I even had, I have better friends because the people I hang out with are people that are, who are good for me and I don't tolerate. Just like bad, just bad influences. I don't, you know, I won't accept that in my life. Food now is my best friend because um, food gives me the energy that I need to train twice a day. I have a great relationship with food. I think powerful is, um, the best way um, to describe how I see myself. Um, you know, I'm learning and developing myself, but also um, when I'm able to dominate on the mat, you know, it gives me power and I feel worth something again. So my, I don't have self-confidence problems anymore because I know what I can do. And I work every day to be better. So it's not muscle, it's the mind and it's your heart. So it's the strength from it. it's the power from it. I actually started a, I'm holding the first uh, workshop. It's a fight together, it's called Fight Together Workshop. It's for a self-defense um, workshop for women with eating disorders. I wanna show women how with martial arts, how your self-worth improves and how, um, and how that can affect, as I said, negative aspects in your life. So in this case, um, the eating disorders. It's not necessarily BJJ, I think it's finding something that is um, that is important enough for you or for the person going through an eating disorder that'll make them stop with it. So it's just something that it's either like, I'm gonna be great at this, and in order to be great at this, I can't have an eating disorder, and that's where it stops. Until you get, until it's at that point, it's, it's much harder to overcome something. You need to find something that's more important than that. It, it'll take a while, it took me seven years, but um, I hope to at least show women how, um, how when I found something and how when my self-worth went up, that's how I got um, rid of my problem. And obviously, you know, getting everyone here and trying to get women with eating disorders together, you know, just knowing that uh, you're not alone and that everyone is, um, that there's a lot of people going through this and I, you know, hope at least from my part that what they can take away is just to see someone who really went through um, a disorder and how I completely was able to turn my life um, around 360 degrees. That's, uh, that's basically what I want to do with this.